Hi everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome! Thank you so much for joining me today. I am happy that you have decided to crochet along with me as we work together on the On the Fringe Pillow. This is the On the Fringe Pillow here and I'm going to show you uh, just a little snippet. I can't pull it back. but. Uh, the camera but what I want to show you is this fun kind of fringy furry faux furry texture on this pillow uh, it also features some great puff stitches up here it's just kind of a fun project to work on so today we are going to learn how to make that fringe stitch and our puff stitches and uh, put together this really fun project for this pattern you are going to need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook you will also need approximately 640 yards of your favorite worsted weight cotton yarn I work a lot with cotton during the summer months it's just one of my favorite fibers to work with it's cool to the touch has great colors fairly inexpensive and easy to come by and it holds its shape well and it's machine wash and dryable. So this pillow is made, pillow cover is made with a cotton yarn and you will need approximately 640 yards of it. Now for my pillow here, I used the Bernat Handicrafter cotton in a pale yellow and I bought it in those smaller 50 gram balls and it took about eight of those. So if you're buying that Bernat Handicrafter cotton, you'll need about eight of those balls. You will also need one 16 inch pillow form or uh, something to stuff your pillow uh, of your choice. I will be using just a uh, pillow that I had around the house that I kind of wanted to give a new life to and uh, I'll be using that one today. But if you're looking for a pillow form, you'll want the 16 inch pillow form. It gives you a nice size for your throw pillow. Okay, so now that we have, all, oh sorry, you'll also need a copy of the crochet pattern and that can be found for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. I will link it here in the video notes for you and that is a free pattern and you'll find it there on my blog. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're here. I like to bring you weekly crochet patterns and tutorials and it's a great way to keep in touch. Also, if you're on my Facebook page, just uh, give it a like there too and a follow and I'd love to stay in contact with you. So now that we have all the materials together, uh, let's get started. So as I mentioned, you'll find the free written copy of this pat crochet pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. You'll probably want to follow along uh, the written pattern with it there. So to begin this project, what we're going to do is chain 54. And just a quick note, I will be assuming that you already have a basic understanding of crochet, your simple stitches, such as your uh, chain stitches and your single crochets and your half double crochets. In this tutorial, I'll take extra time to show you how to do the loop stitch, which is the stitch that you're going to use for that kind of shaggy faux fur look. And as well, I'll show you the puff stitch stitches as well. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to chain 54 stitches. And once you have chained 54 chains, you will start on row one. And row one says to single crochet in the second chain from your hook and in each stitch across. So single crochet in the second, one, two, the second chain from your hook, and then single crochet in each of the st chain stitches all the way across to the end. So at the end of this row, you will have a total of 53 single crochet stitches. So once you've come to the end of your first row there of single crochet stitches, you're going to come to the end, you're going to chain one, and you're going to turn your work. Now in this next row, row two, 
we are going to start our rows of loop stitches. Now the loop stitches, I will show them to you in quite a little bit of detail. These are the stitches that are going to form that shaggy um, kind of faux fur kind of look that you had on the front of the pillow. You make these loop stitches and then at the very end you go through and you cut all the loops uh, to make them single strands and uh, make them look shaggy. <laughs> uh, you can leave the loops uncut if you'd like. Uh, in my pillow I have gone and cut them, but I'll show you that when we get there. So what you're going to do for the first uh, thing for row two is you've chained one, you've, you've turned, you're going to single crochet in that first stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch, so you're going to single crochet in that first stitch. Now in this next single crochet, we are going to work our first loop stitch. The loop stitch takes a little bit of practice, uh, and if it's your first time doing it, it might feel a little bit awkward. There are a few different ways uh, that people like to do them, so today I'm just going to demonstrate the one way that I do it, <laughs> and um, you might have a different way to make your loop stitch, and that's, that's great. So this is the way that I make mine. What you're going to do is in the next stitch, which is going to be our first loop stitch, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to insert your crochet hook under both loops, just like that. You are then going to take the yarn and you're going to wrap your working yarn and you're going to wrap it around your index finger. This is my index finger. I'm going to wrap it around my index finger, okay? You're then going to take your crochet hook and these two strands of yarn here and you're going to place them over top of your crochet hook. You're just going to yarn over. Make sure that both strands, you're still holding on to your loop with your index finger. If you look behind, you can see I'm holding my strand back here between my middle finger and my ring finger. I'm just kind of holding it tight so that it doesn't get away on me. So we've yarned over. We're going to pull our crochet hook through and draw up a loop. And that loop is going to have both strands that were looped over your index finger on them. You can see that I'm still holding on to the loop with my index finger. You're then going to kind of hold the stitch with the pointy finger, your index finger on your other hand, just kind of hold it. You can then remove your finger from your loop. Then pick up your working yarn and you're going to yarn over and holding back that loop so you don't lose it, you're just going to pull your yarn through and complete the stitch as you normally would. So on the back side here, it will look almost like a regular single crochet, but when you turn it over, you have this loop that's hanging out the back. And you can play with the lengths and heights of your loop depending on how much uh, slack you leave, uh, how big you make your loop, or how tight you wrap it around your finger. So let me show you uh, in the next stitch. You're going to do loop stitches all the way across to the end. You will have a total of 51 loop stitches because in that last stitch we're going to work a single crochet. Let me show you the loop stitch a few more times though. So you're going to insert your hook under both loops in the next stitch. You're going to kind of wrap the yarn around your index finger like this, and you're going to place it over top of your crochet hook. You're going to yarn over. You're then going to draw your crochet hook through and pull up a loop. All the while you're holding on to that loop on the other side with your index finger. Once you've pulled up your loop, you're going to just place your finger over top of it just to hold it in place. You can remove your index finger from your loop on the other side, pick up your working yarn, holding back that loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops on your hook. We'll do it again. Insert your hook in the next stitch. You're going to wrap that yarn, working yarn, around your index finger 
place it over top of your crochet hook, pull through and draw up a loop, hang on to your loop on the index finger. Once you've drawn up your loop, just place your finger over top to hold it in place, remove your finger, take your working yarn, hold your loops back, yarn over, once you get your there you go, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. It will take a little bit of practice and you may find at first your loops are kind of all over the place. Uh, maybe some are a little bit smaller than others. Uh, don't worry as long as um, the majority of them are the right size. When you go to cut your loops or when you have row upon row, you won't notice the short ones as much. <laughs> or if you're a perfectionist like I sometimes am, you can go through and undo it and redo it until you get it right. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, just go with it. This is your pillow, your artistic expression. So let's try that one more time. We're going to insert our hook under both loops wrap that yarn around your finger lay it over top of your crochet hook and again if you look back here i'm kind of working my holding my working yarn between my middle and my index finger you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull your hook through and drop your loop you can then remove your finger from your loop yarn over again and pull through both loops on your hook. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, or wrap it around your index finger and yarn over, pull through, holding onto your loop. Once you have your other finger kind of holding it in place, remove your finger, pick up your working yarn, Hold back your loop, yarn over, and pull through. Don't worry, you'll have lots of practice in this pillow. So insert your hook, wrap it around your finger, and yarn over, pull through, secure it a little bit, remove your finger, take your working yarn, yarn over, and pull through. And when I'm yarning over and pulling through, I'm holding that loop down in the back there so that it doesn't slip. And when you're finished, they will be pretty tight. Uh, I don't have too much problems with them unraveling or anything like that. Um, so you should be fine. So insert your hook, wrap it around your index finger, yarn over, pull through, place your finger over top there, Remove your other finger, yarn over, and pull through the two loops on your hook. So you are going to do that all the way across, and when you come uh, to the last stitch, and then in the last stitch, you will work one single crochet. So you will work a total of 51 loop stitches. So once you come to your last loop stitch there, you're going to work one single crochet in the final stitch. You'll have worked 51 loop stitches and then you're going to end with one single crochet in the last stitch. That brings you to the end of row two. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. Now if you take a look at your work, you can see here that you have all your nice little loops all here on the front very fun and happy okay and then you're going to for row three you're simply going to work one single crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch across so what this is going to do is it's going to bring you all the way back to the beginning so that you can work all of your loop stitches on the same side so you don't want to forget this return single crochet row so this is row three and it's just a single crochet in each stitch all the way across to the end. You will have a total again of 53 single crochet stitches. 
At the end of row three, you'll have single crochet in each stitch across. At the end of row three, you're going to once again chain one and then turn your work. And then for rows four to seven, you are simply going to repeat rows two and three twice more. Now row two was your loop stitch row and row three was your single crochet row. So you're going to repeat a loop stitch row, a single crochet row, twice more. So you will have a total of three rows of loops and three rows of single crochet stitches. So to begin your loop stitch row, you will again chain one, you'll single crochet in that first stitch, and then you will work on making your loop stitches across. And you'll remember your loop stitch, you insert your hook, you're going to wrap the yarn around that index finger, lay it over the top of your hook, pull it through, and drop a loop. You're then going to kind of secure that loop with your finger while you pull your other hand out. Take the yarn, pull that loop back, yarn over, and pull through. So do your loop stitches all the way across. Do another single crochet row, one more row of loop stitches, and then one final row of single crochet stitches. So uh, until row seven, you will have a total of three rows of loop stitches, uh, and then uh, just do two more rows of single crochet. Okay, and uh, meet me back here when you're finished that, and we'll move on to the puff stitches. Okay, so now I have worked my three rows of loop stitches with my single crochet rows in between each and I've now come to the end of row seven and you will too so you have your loop stitches here. Once you come to the end of row seven you are going to chain one and you are going to turn your work. We are now going to start a row of puff stitch rows. First thing you're going to do is you are going to single crochet in that first stitch. You will then work one puff stitch. To work your puff stitch you're going to yarn over, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch under both loops, you're going to yarn over and you're going to drop a loop and you're going to do that for a total of four times. So there's one, then twice, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have five loops on your hook. Do it again, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, seven loops on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop for a total of nine loops on your hook. To complete the puff stitch you will yarn over once again and draw through all the loops on your hook. Once you have your puff stitch you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. And then the pattern will ask you to repeat that. So repeat the puff stitch, single crochet, puff stitch, single crochet. And you're going to do that all the way across to your last stitch, which will be a single crochet stitch. So once again, to work our puff stitch, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, three loops on your hook and you're going to do that for a total of four times. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and one last time, yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. So you'll have a total of nine loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over one last time and pull that through all the loops on your hook and that's another puff stitch made. You're going to single crochet in the next stitch 
and then puff in the next. One, two, three, four, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. Then single crochet in the next stitch. So continue to repeat that all the way across your work and I will here in a sec just turn it around so you can get a quick glimpse of what it's looking like so far. Puff stitch, single crochet, all the way across. So if I turn it over you will see here that you have your loop stitches and then you have your puff stitches, row of puff stitches right here. And you're going to continue that all the way across. Now when you come to the end you will single crochet in that final stitch and then you're going to chain one and turn your work. So you can see my row of loop stitches here going into my puff stitches. Now we want to get our hook all the way back to the other side. So we're simply going to single crochet in each stitch across and this is row nine. So you're going to insert your hook in the first stitch and work your first single crochet and work a single crochet in each puff stitch and each single crochet stitch all the way across. So once again, you're going to have 53 single crochet stitches. So once you come to the end of your single crochet row, you're going to chain one and turn once again. Now what we want to do is, is we want to work another row of these puff stitches, but we do not want them to be lined up over top of one another. We want to stagger these uh, puff stitches so that they, in the next row they happen in between the ones on the row below. Uh, so what we are going to do is instead of single crocheting one stitch and then doing a puff stitch, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches. So single crochet in the first stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch. And then at this time you will work your first puff stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook in the first uh, in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through and do that four times. It's two, three, and four. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And then single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to be asked to repeat the puff stitch, single crochet, puff stitch, single crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way across to the last two stitches and then in the last two stitches you will work one single crochet stitch in each. So until then you'll work puff stitch, single crochet, puff stitch, single crochet all the way across. And what I'll do is I'll just work a one or two more here and then I'll turn my work so that you can see where the puff stitches are falling. Your puff stitches should always go toward the front of your work. So if you notice that some of them are popping out the other side, you may have uh, made a small mistake somewhere or have forgotten to do your single crochet row back. So let me turn this over and you can see. So if you take a look at my work here, you see that my puff stitches are lining up nicely in between the ones in the row below. So you're going to continue that all the way across until you get to your last two stitches. And then in the last two stitches, you will work one single crochet in each. So once you come to your last two stitches in this row, you'll have worked one puff stitch and you'll have two stitches left. You're going to single crochet in each of the last two stitches. like that. Then you're going to chain one and you're going to turn. Now you're going to want to work 
all the way back across to the other side, which means you're going to single crochet in each stitch, in each uh, single crochet stitch, and in each puff stitch all the way across your work you will have 53 single crochet stitches so single crochet all the way across when you come to the end of your single crochet row you're going to chain one and you're going to turn once again now we are going to work the final row of our puff stitches for this section and so you're coming now to row 12 and for row 12 you're going to simply repeat what you did for row 8 and that was the single crochet in the first stitch and then puff stitch single crochet and puff stitch so you're going to do that all the way across single crochet and puff stitch single crochet and puff stitch so you will do that all the way across and then you're going to repeat row 9 which was your single crochet row to bring you all the way back to the other side so repeat row 8 which is your single crochet and puff stitch and then repeat row 9 which is your single crochet stitch all the way across I almost missed a puff stitch there. Once you have completed that, meet me back here and we will start the main section of our pillow, uh, which is done again in the loop stitch. Okay, so welcome back. So now you will have repeated that row eight, which is your puff stitch row and row nine which is your single crochet row here in the back and once you come to the end of that uh, row nine single crochet you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work uh, now as i mentioned earlier we are now going to start uh, the sort of middle center section of the pillow and that section is done completely in this loop stitch that you learned earlier. So you're going to be working uh, about 18, I'm just trying to do my math here, you're going to be working 18 rows of this loop stitch with a single crochet row in between each one just as you did down here. Uh, your work from the beginning of this loop section will measure about 9 inches. So once you start these loops, you're going to work them for about nine inches as long as uh, your pillow size is turning out to be the same size as mine. So you've chained one, you've turned your work, you're going to single crochet in that first stitch and you're going to work your loop stitch. And you'll remember to work your loop stitch, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch. You're going to wrap the yarn around your index finger you're going to yarn over. You're going to pull your hook through, back through the stitch, keeping the yarn looped around your finger. Then I use my other index finger to kind of just secure it a little bit. Remove your other index finger, pick up your working yarn, yarn over, and pull through. And you're going to do that all the way across to the end. Then you will work your one row of single crochet and uh, you will continue working these rows of loop stitches until your work from the beginning of the loop stitches of this center section uh, is about nine inches. Then once you reach that nine inches of loop stitches, you're basically going to repeat all the work uh, that you did before this. You're going to repeat your three rows of puff stitches, and then you're going to repeat your three rows of loop stitches. I am not going to show you all of that in this video as we've already kind of gone through it at the very beginning. So uh, 
please head over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and there you will find the written pattern if uh, you need a little bit more explanation. So continue the uh, loop stitch rows and the single crochet rows for a total of nine inches. And then you're going to repeat that section that we just did with the puff stitches. You'll have three rows of puff stitches. And then you're going to repeat three rows of loop stitches with single crochet rows in between. Once uh, you finish that, your pillow front should measure about 17 or 17 and a half inches um, by 17 and a half inches. So it should be rather square by the time you are done. So go ahead and work on that. Meet me back here and we'll go through the next steps. Now once you've finished your work, so you will have, and I actually, I went ahead and cut my loops on this one already. Um, you will have your, uh, your section of loops here, you'll have your puff stitches, you'll have your larger section of loops, and then you'll have another puff stitch section, and then your smaller section of loops. What you're going to do on this front side is, um, well, one, you can go ahead and cut your loops if you choose to do so as I have done. Now, um, you haven't fastened off at the top, so you've worked your final single crochet row. You don't need to fasten off yet. You can leave your loop uh, on your hook, okay? Then I'm going to show you on a smaller the swatch that I have right here, but what you're going to do is if you want this kind of shaggy look, you're going to cut the tips of your loops. You can leave them as loop stitches if you'd like. It's all in the designer's preference. Um, I just chose to cut mine to give it some a little bit of a different kind of texture and different look as you can see it's giving right here. If I take my little swatch there you can see these. this is what it looks like if the loops are left uncut versus when you cut the loops it kind of gives it this very soft soft feel. My kids actually uh, love it. <laughs> they call this the soft fluffy pillow. Um, so it just gives it a bit of fun texture as opposed to leaving it with the loops. So if you are going to cut your loops, what you're going to do is you're going to just start along one end and you're very simply going, I'm going to move this one out of the way so you can see it better. You're very simply going to cut the ends of these loops just like this. So you're going to go through and you're going to cut each one all the way across and you're going to do that uh, for the entire pillow. It can be a little bit tedious but uh, the results are excellent <laughs> in my opinion. So just go through, cut each of the loops. You don't have to worry about them uh, unfraying or anything like that. Just make sure that you're not clipping any other part of the stitch, you're just clipping your loops. You're going to go through and you're going to do that for all of the loops on your pillow for this and for the larger section. And um, I'm sure that you will love the results. Once you have done that, such as I have here on my larger one here, we're going to do one round of single crochet stitches. All the way around. So what I did was I left my, I didn't fasten off my yarn and then you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet one in the first stitch on the corner stitch and another um, single, cro uh, cro uh, single crochet stitch uh, in total, you're going to work 58 more down this rough side. So turn your work so you have this rough side facing you. So it's not, uh, the stitches are not easily marked. You're just going to be working roughly along the side. You want to make sure that you keep your stitches even and you want to work a total of 59 stitches all the way down the side. If you find it easier, sometimes I like to take a stitch marker and then you're going to mark that stitch and then you're going to work half the stitches on one side and half the stitches on the other side of that stitch marker if that makes it a little bit easier for you. So I'm just uh, single crocheting all the way down the side 
I'm uh, not uh, paying too much attention to where I'm inserting my hook. I'm just making sure that it's uh, well secured into the edge. And it works out to be about one single crochet stitch per row, actually, uh, in your pillow. So you're going to work 59 single crochet stitches down each of these roughs, uh, down this rough side. Then you're going to work three single crochet stitches in the corner. You'll work along the bottom of your pillow to the other side. Work another three single crochet stitches in the corner. Work 58 single crochet stitches up the side, at the opposite side, and then you'll single crochet stitch all the way across the top of your work. When you come to the end, you will work two single crochet stitches in the final corner, and then you will join with a slip stitch. So basically, we just want to put one round of single crochet stitches, uh, three in each corner, all the way around your work and that's just going to give it a little bit more of an edge for when we join the front to the bottom piece. So go ahead and do that. Evenly work your single crochet stitches all the way around. Three single crochet stitches in each corner and uh, meet me back here and we will begin the back of your pillow. Okay, so once you have worked your single crochet edging all the way around that front piece and you have cut your loops, what you're going to do is you're going to set that piece aside and then you're going to work on the back of your pillow and at this point you are in the home stretch. If you have stuck with me this long, um, you will find that this, uh, the back of the pillow is quite easy peasy as my kids would say. So what all you're going to do is you are going to start off by chaining 56 stitches. So 56 stitches. I'm not going to do it completely here uh, at this time. I have another sample worked up. Uh, just for the sake of time in this film. So you'll work your um, 56 chains and then all you're going to do is working, skipping that first chain and working in the second chain from your hook, you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So you're going to have a total of 55 half double crochet stitches and I am just doing a small swatch. So 55 half double crochet stitches all the way across. And then you're simply going to work row upon row of half double crochet stitches. So it's just a plain back. Um, I like the half double crochet stitch. It works a little bit faster than a single crochet, which is why I chose it. So when you come to the end, chain one, turn, and work another 55 half double crochet stitches all the way back. And you're going to just keep doing that back and forth, back and forth, um, your half double crochet stitches. Uh, and in the end, it will look just like this. Okay, so your 56 half double crochet stitches row upon row for this uh, back, that's all you have to do. Then once you come to the end, you're going to work about 17 or 17 and a half inches um, in this pattern, uh, just the half double crochets, and then you're going to fasten off and you're going to weave in your ends. So that is all there is to working the back of this pillow. Then the next step for the pillow is you're going to join it together. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, front side of your pillow. Oh, sorry, grab the camera there. Take your front side of your pillow and you're going to lay the wrong side of it, the wrong side of your pillow up against the wrong side of your half double crochet side. Um, now once you weave in your ends, as long as they're properly tucked in, the right and wrong side doesn't really appear because of the way it was worked. But uh, you just wanna make sure that 
uh, your lines are all running the same way and you want um, your two kind of rougher sides together okay so then with the right side of your pillow facing you the front side facing you you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in the top right hand corner okay and we are going to work what's called a reverse single crochet stitch all the way around the edge of this pillow now normally when you work your uh, a single crochet stitch if you are right-handed you are working from right to left for the reverse single crochet stitch you will be working from left so if I turn my work here because I'm going to start going down this long edge you're going to be working the stitch from left to right and I'll show you here what I mean you're going to be working through both thicknesses now with the front side facing you your stitches are evenly and well marked because you've done this edging all the way around on your half double crochet side it's not as easily marked but that's okay all you want to do is make sure that it's not bunching anywhere you're holding it nice and flat together uh, before you begin make sure that all the sides are the same for your two pieces and adjust it if it's necessary Okay, so you're going to make sure that there's no bunching. You're going to work through both of these thicknesses. You're going to hold them together. If it helps for you to pin them together, then go right ahead. And we're going to start working our reverse single crochet stitches. So to work the reverse single crochet stitch, you're going to be working left to right. All you're going to do is to take your hook, insert it back in the stitch behind, you're working under both loops. You're going to insert it through the second layer down below and you're going to complete your single crochet stitch as you normally would. Okay, I'm just gonna move my, that's a little bit better. You're going to uh, then work another one. So what you can see it kind of makes a little bit of a chain here. Oh, I got a bit of a glare here. Okay, so you're going to uh, work your next reverse single crochet. So you're working in the stitch here behind. You're going to insert your hook under both loops through both thicknesses of your pillow. You're going to yarn over and pull it through like that. And then you're going to yarn over and complete the stitch. I'm going to try that again. In the stitch behind, you're going to insert your hook under both loops. You're going to stick it through both thicknesses there. You're going to grab your yarn, pull it up, and yarn over and pull through. So you are going to do that for each stitch all the way around. So you will work one reverse single crochet stitch and each stitch even on your corners you just need one because it's a bit of a longer stitch all the way around your pillow and as you are doing it you will see let's do a couple more here that what you're having is this nice kind of rough almost like a corded edging on your pillow just kind of a fun neat edging I use this edging in a variety of projects just gives it a little something more than just doing a straight single crochet a little bit of added texture and uh, stiffness and shape to your pillow especially when it's worked in the cotton yarn. So continue working one reverse single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around your pillow. Now I recommend working the first three sides and then if you are using a pillow form, a pillow form, um, don't forget to insert it 
before you continue to do your reverse single crochet uh, up the fourth side or if you're using just like a uh, fiber filling then uh, be sure to leave an opening and stuff your pillowcase first and then continue the f working the final side and uh, <clears throat> excuse me and then join with a slip stitch in the first reverse single crochet stitch so there you have it thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the on the fringe pillow I hope that you enjoy your finished product as much as I enjoy mine it's just such a fun kind of texture fun look and uh, has endless possibilities for color so thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook so we can stay in touch. I've left all the links for you there in the video notes. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to drop me a line and uh, I will try my best <laughs> to answer them for you. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy crocheting. Bye.